Hi, this is going to be a quick introduction into how to use a G-Rex. Um, I've plugged a G-Rex into my system, and I'm going to power it up. It's turned off at the moment, and it's now powering up. If we run the G-Code Loader program, we can hit the Find Gecko button, and you, as you can see, one has appeared at an IP address of 192.168.2.35. My IP is 192.168.2.30. So this is already on my network. If you had come up with a strange IP value here, you would want to change the IP so that it matches uh, an available IP in your network, and then hit the Set Address button. Uh, once you've found your G-Rex, you want to press Launch Firmware Loader. This will bring up the Internet Explorer and attach via HTML uh, to our G-Rex. Here we are on the uh, current download manager in the G-Rex. It tells me my default FPGA configuration. You can set um, several different FPGA files into the Rex. An auto boot time, and as you can see, mine is set to 10. This means after I power up, I have 10 seconds to connect to a G-Rex using the Internet Explorer, or it will simply boot the firmware that I have loaded. In this case, I've loaded the firmware for Mach 3, and had I not connected fast enough, the system would have booted into the Mach 3 firmware, and you can no longer uh, get to the download manager. To load firmware into a, a, a running G-Rex is pretty easy. You just go to the bottom and hit Upload New Firmware. It will then ask you on your system where the firmware is. And as you can see, I'm using one called G101DLP050910.bin. And if I say Open and Upload, the G-Rex will now uh, download that file from my desktop into itself and you'll get the normal progress bars on your screen as you would for any HTML upload. It doesn't take long to upload the firmware into a Rex. There we have it. We have loaded it and it tells us how many bytes we've sent in and that we're successful. We can then go home. Um, you'll have to do that with the main firmware as well as an FPGA configuration. Um, here we can hit upload and upload one of these. And as you can see, I've got top S5004 XSVF as my um, FPGA configuration. And when I hit upload, it will go in. Once you set a time limit in here, which is above uh, 3, this is your auto boot time. You don't have to wait for an auto boot. You can just push the Run button, at which time the G-Rex is no longer attachable by this program. It is now running uh, the Mach 3 firmware and waiting for input. So at that point, you would have to run Mach 4 to be able to use the Rex. We can exit this program now, and I'll show you running version of uh, Mach 4. I'm running in debug mode, so it takes a little while to come up. Here we are. We can see that not much has changed other than in the up, upper corner it says Mach 4 CNC application. If we go to a tool path uh, or to a diagnostic screen, you can see that the pulse frequency readout has changed to 4 megahertz. That's an indication that you're in uh, a G-Rex. Also, you'll notice we have an extra page tab up here called G-Rex. If we hit it, we begin to see several of the registers and some test functions of a G-Rex. Uh, we see a heartbeat, first of all, which occurs about every 250 milliseconds. Um, this is used uh, by the program and by the G-Rex to make sure that everything is running well. We have LEDs that indicate that the unit is still, it is not moving. The queues are ended. The moving average buffers have drained. We are not paused, purging, halted. And the GRR match is not a functional LED yet. That tells us that a global rate register has been set to something that we've changed it to. We can see whether we're homed, whether our queue is full. 
or if we have a sequence error, these two lights will flash red to indicate an error. Uh, at the moment, it can happen because uh, we're still in very early pre-alpha testing here. Uh, you can jog from this screen. You may be able to hear my motor going in the background. It's going at 65 kilohertz on a jog at the moment. And we see numbers count in our GREX positions. These are rate totals from the axis within the GREX. And they correspond to steps in Mach 3's step position register. If we go to the program screen, you'll see that, indeed, I'm getting a readout as I jog my axes. And it's moving fairly quickly at 4,300 and some odd uh, down here on the screen. You'll be able to watch it as I jog. There you have 4,000 millimeters uh, per minute, approximately. And I should tell you, this is running at 1,000 steps per millimeter. So that's about uh, that's about 60,000 steps per second. And dual axis jog is no problem. When you're jogging, if we look at the GREX screen, you can see there is sequence counters to make sure that movement sequences stay in tune, as well as message counters. If I hit the jog key, you'll see it sends a message and then continues sending a message. If for any reason the jog message stops every quarter second or so, the axis would just come to a natural decelerated halt. Um, we have some test buttons on the screen. This UCHAN SYN will resynchronize the channel should you see a synchronization error. I'm not getting them too frequently at the moment. Um, it seems to be getting better by the day. Uh, the jogging is very, very sensitive. If I tap the key here, you'll see that I simply cannot tap too fast for the G-Rex to keep up. If I uh, hit a go to zero button, we'll go back to zeros. And at the moment, I have a small resyncing error, so you may see a uh, small deviation from zero once we actually hit zero today. But this is two motors running now at approximately 60 kilohertz, a little over 12,000 millimeters per, per minute. If we load a program, let's take a look at it. our um, Scorpion program is good. Oh, and I should show you the motor tuning. This is one of the more important aspects of using a Rex. Here in the motor tuning, we have all kinds of selections for how it's going to work. First of all, for the pulse widths, we can select duty cycles varying from 50% active high duty cycle to a 25% active either or a 75% duty cycle either, as well as a quadrature mode in case you want to put a quadrature to a system. Here we select our maximum frequency for our selector range from 4 megahertz down to 32 kilohertz. I haven't seen much difference in terms of smoothness, uh, irrespective of which one we choose on that one. This selects our encoders and how they are read, whether quadrature, tack, uh, step rising, step falling, etc., and how many counts uh, each activation of an input signal will cause in an encoder. These sliders give you the velocity in uh, units per minute for a particular axes. The axes are changed by pressing these buttons. So you can see on the x-axis, I'm set to just about 4,000 uh, millimeters per minute, which would equate to 65 kilohertz. Same with the y-axis. Here we have acceleration, and acceleration is smoothly settable from one second of acceleration down to uh, 900 microseconds of acceleration. Because I'm using stepper motors, which are unloaded and bolted to a steel plate, I tend to give them about a third of a second uh, to accelerate. When you're finished setting up a G-Rex, here we set the steps per unit per axis, by the way. When you're finished setting up a G-Rex, you need to push the OK button. Pressing Exit will drop your settings. Pressing OK will flash the, re the, uh, the information back into the gecko. You can see that it has stopped corresponding with us until it reboots. It zeroed all its positions, and now we are uh, properly running. You can hear my axes moving it up to 65 kilohertz when I'm jogging. Uh, we'll hit go to zero here.
let's run this uh, Scorpion so that you can hear the motors throughout the uh, range as they go. This program at 65 kilohertz uh, really doesn't take very long to run. Let's give it a uh, feed rate. I'm not sure if it's reset in the program of uh, 5,000 millimeters per per minute, and let it do its thing. As you can hear from the motors, they tend to whine out a bit as they go, and these are bolted to a steel plate, so you'll hear a bit of rattling going on in the background as they resonate when they hit the resonant bands. Uh, they don't seem to lose any steps, however, and the movement seems pretty crisp. Uh, at this point, I still have a lot more work to do to uh, tie everything together and to uh, complete this experimental mode that I'm running. I'm not using a G-Rex as it's been intended to be used. This is actually subdividing all moves to uh, approximately uh, 50 milliseconds and applying my own acceleration formulas in addition to the moving average formulas of the G-Rex. So this is really an experimental mode of movement. Uh, so far I'm quite pleased. All the G-Code interpreter commands are working and running, uh, circular as well as linear. And that's it for your first look at a G-Rex. I thought I'd give you a chance to see exactly how to set it up and how to get it running uh, so that when you do get one and when we get a little bit further along, you'll know how to set up for your testing.